Hi everybody, it's Mr. Kennard again. Um, we're going to take a little time, sidestep some of the stuff in FOSS to give you a little bit of other background. Remember we had said that elements were the building blocks of all matter, all substances, everything in the world, everything in the universe is made up of elements and the different elements that are on the periodic table. Remember we said they were like uh, substances or like words and words are made up of letters and that the letters would be the elements that go along that. Well, each element is different, but what it really boils down to is there's actually building blocks of the elements, the building blocks of the matter. And that's what this lesson's going to focus on, is called the atoms of the elements. One of the things that we tried to impress upon you is that elements are all different from each other. There's over a hundred of them, and they may look alike and maybe have similar properties, but they are all different and unique. Well, what makes each element different is the building block of each element. The building block of each element is the atom that makes it up. And each element has its own unique atom to it. What does that mean? We'll share it with you next. The atoms of an element are all the same. That's our title up here. All the elements, atoms, are the same. The atom is the smallest particle of that element, the smallest one. So you can identify an element based on what the atom looks like. Atoms are kind of like, the, uh, the atoms of an element are identical to each other. Sort of like if you were to compare them to breeds of dogs. Most of us would be able to identify, first off, what a dog looks like. We're not confusing it with a hippo or an elephant or a, a giraffe or even a cat. Yeah, they have similar features, but different breeds of dogs even look different. Most of us would be able to understand a Chihuahua or a Great Dane or a Dalmatian or a, um, a Husky or um, a Maltese or um, you know any of those kinds of ones because they have a unique feature that identifies them as that particular dog. Well, similarly, elements and their atoms look identical to each other. So when you talk about a calcium atom, all calcium atoms look like all other calcium atoms. All helium atoms look like all other helium atoms. All phosphorus, all aluminum, all tin, all copper, all rutherfordium, all of those atoms look like those atoms of that same kind. And that's how we're able to identify them just like we would be able to identify breeds of dogs based on their characteristics. Now, I referenced just about dogs having similar characteristics. Most of us, again, would be able to identify a dog in a picture, a beagle, whatever it is. It doesn't look like a cat. It doesn't look like whatever. They all have similar characteristics to them. They all have a certain set of combinations and things that they have in common. You know, a Chihuahua and a Great Dane, quite a big difference. But they're dogs. They have a tail. They have ears. They have fur. They bark. They this. They that all that kind of stuff. So they have some similar characteristics in common. Well, actually, atoms of all the elements, all atoms of all elements also have three smaller parts inside them that they have in common as well. And maybe some of you have heard these things. Uh, they have things called protons. They have things called electrons. Let me make my check mark here, my uh, check mark. And they also have neutrons. These three parts here are all in common with every other element's atom. So if you look at an aluminum atom, they will have these three parts. If you look at a potassium atom, they will have these three parts. If you look at a helium atom, they will have these three parts. So they have things in common with each other, but yet, just like dogs, they have different features of those things that they have in common, which makes them unique. Now, to help illustrate where and where we would find those three different smaller particles, um, I'm a kid of the 70s, and growing up in 70s, you only had three channels on television. Yeah, not 103, but three or four, maybe if you were lucky with the right antenna. Um, there was a popular TV comedy on in the 1970s called WKRP in Cincinnati. It was about a radio station. Anyway, I remember watching this episode. There was a little snip of this episode where one of the DJs is trying to explain the smaller parts and structure of an atom to one of his friends or whatever it was, someone he, he, he knew he was trying to get to go back to school. 
But in doing so, he does a really good job of explaining in kind of an analogy the parts of an atom and the members and the protons, the neutrons and electrons. So I'm going to put that little, that little clip of it. It's about a four-minute video, but it really does a good job of explaining the three different parts to those atoms. Here you go. Arnold, you're smart. You're the president of your gang. It's different. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. In school, they got geometry and, and English and biology. And, and I just don't understand a thing about it, man. I just don't get any of it. Well, what about chemistry? That's the hardest one. Did they teach you anything about the atom? The atom? <laughs> year after year. And I don't know the first thing about it. I can give you the basic of the atom in two minutes. You'll understand it perfectly and remember it for months. <laughs> Two minutes? You're crazy, you know that? If I can teach you about the atom in two minutes, will you go back to school and finish out the year? How about it, huh? Come on, you're a betting man. How about it, Arnold? Yeah. Yeah, okay, sure. You got it. I got your word? Yeah, you got my word. And two minutes. We got a deal. Yeah, we got a deal. All right, sit down. Okay. Okay. <laughs> there are three gangs on the street, right? Yeah, yeah, three gangs. And this? This right here is the territory. Now, here is the neighborhood. Got that? Yeah. And right in the middle of this neighborhood is a gang called the New Boys. Yeah, the New Boys. Good name. OK. Out here on the outside of the neighborhood, on the edge of the neighborhood, is another gang. You know, these are real negative dudes, really negative. Right? Right. right. Now, they call themselves the elected ones. All right, the elected You got that? Really negative. They don't like nothing. Right. And they all the time out here circling around the neighborhood, just circling, you know, <laughs> checking out the new boys. Now, the new boys see this, and they get, you know, they figure there's something wrong here, so they make a deal with another, another gang, a gang of very happy-go-lucky guys. They call themselves the pros. <laughs> the pros. Now, the pros are very positive cats. You see, they got all the good-looking women, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> see, now, the pros... And the, and the elected ones, interesting thing, they hate each other. So much so that they keep the same number of members in the gang. Just in case you did. Right. So if I got 10 elected ones, how many pros do I have? 10. All right. Now, how many gangs do I have? Three. Name them. The new boys, the elected ones, and the pros. All right. Who's here? The elected ones. All right. Now, what are they, negative? Yeah, negative. All right. Now, who's positive? The pros. And you're running out of time. All right. Now, you see right here? The pros and, and, and the new boys, they call their hangout the nucleus. Yeah. Now, see, that's a real tough word. It's Latin. But I kind of think it's Swahili, and it means center. Yeah? What is it? It's nucleus. Say it. Nucleus. Is that really African? Say it. Nucleus. You got it? Yeah. All right. I'll give you another Swahili word. It's, uh, it's uh, Tron. Yeah, it means dude. Yeah, Tron. Dude. All these gangs like that name so well that they all decide to use it. For instance, the, uh, the pros right here in the middle start calling themselves the protons. And the new boys, well, they start calling themselves the neutrons. <laughs> and out here on the edge here, the elected ones, they start calling themselves the elect... The electrons, the protons, and the neutrons. Yeah. And all this right here, this is the neighborhood. This is block after block of nothing. You understand block after block of nothing, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I know all about that. And your time is up, Professor DJ. Good. I was finished anyway. Now you're going back to school. Man. School? Man, all I know about is a bunch of damn gangs that live in a round neighborhood. <laughs> Arnold, that's the atom. That's it, man. That's it. What's this right here? Huh? Uh, protons and neutrons. All right, and they call this the what? Nucleus. All right, what are these guys up here? Electrons. Are they negative or positive? Negative. And how do they move? Round and round. And if I got two of them, how many protons do I have? Two. Now, are protons negative or positive? Positive. All right, and what's all this right here? Oh, that's the neighborhood. Which is? Nothing. You got it, man. You get an A. <laughs> you know this stuff backwards and forwards. I do? Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs>
So as you can see from the video, it's kind of fun and funny and, you know, gives and takes, but he breaks it down into an analogy of the shape of the atom and the members of the atom and the smaller parts of the atom and where they're located and stuff. So I just want to take a few minutes here to go back over those three different parts. The first one he called with the pros and the protons and dude and all that. Uh, protons are really, really large. They're really heavy atomic-wise. And they have, like he said, they were positive. They get all the chicks, you dig. And they, um, they're, they're found in the nucleus. Now, when we're building these kind of models, for you give, give you a visual, if you were to take an atom and blow it up big size, you know, in, in, enlarge it so that you can actually see some of these particles and stuff, I want you to have in mind a proton being like a bowling ball. If you think about a bowling ball, round, heavy, drop it on your foot, it's going to smash it, one of those kinds of things. So give that illustration. If we were to take that one, um, a bowling ball would be about the size of the protons. And that, again, is found in the nucleus or center of the atom, like you talked about the center of the neighborhood there. Um, one thing that Ms. Mott later on will be talking about is what the number of protons tells us. And the number of protons is going to be what's known as the atomic number. She's going to go into a little bit more detail with that a little later. Our second subatomic particle was the new boys, or the neutrons, as they called them. Um, a little bit of information about them. They are also the same size as the protons. So remember I said they were like a bowling ball? The protons were like a bowling ball? <coughs> Excuse me. The neutrons are also kind of like a bowling ball in size. Large, heavy, massive, okay? And, uh, but they do not have a charge. They do not have a charge to them. They are neutral. So they're not forward or backward. They're stuck in neutral. They have no charge whatsoever. They're just hanging out with the protons uh, and keeping them company. Where were they at? They also found in the nucleus, right in that center part of the neighborhood. And they're really there to kind of add some more weight to the, new, to the, um, to the atom. So they're just kind of hanging out with the protons there in the nucleus. And our last ones were the elected ones. They also went by electrons. Uh, remember, um, these, elect these electrons, they were really, really negative dudes, negative, really a negative attitude towards them. So they have a negative, and the pros are very positive. That's one opposite. The other opposite is that the electrons are actually very tiny particles. If we referred to protons and neutrons as bowling balls, I want you to think of an electron as maybe the size of a BB, like a thousand times smaller than the bowling ball. So they're just really, really tiny, but they pack a really important punch. Um, the other thing that uh, Venus Flytrap, the guy, the DJ, was talking about was where they're located. They are flying around the outside. We call them orbits, like planets around the outside, around the nucleus, flying in circles around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. A uh, little joke, all the electrons go around the outside, around the outside. And again, like it said in the video, the thing about the electrons is the number of electrons has to equal the number of protons. So the number of negatives equals the number of positives. So make sure that they're balanced out. So if you have 10 of one, you have to have 10 of the other. And that's how they keep that atom in balance. And then to recap in summary, again, it's those atoms and the elements uh, that actually make the substances. Like we said earlier, that the elements are like letters, elements are like letters, and substances are like the words that make them up. And the atoms have a big impact on how well they join together in other compounds to make up substances. There are some atoms uh, like neon and helium and argon that will not join with any other atoms or any other elements because they are happy, they're full. But lots of other ones like we saw with carbon and oxygen and hydrogen, those are in so many different ones because they are easily combined. So how they joined together, we talked about a little bit in earlier, some of the bonding that went on. So the structure of the atom, the structure of those elements have a big impact on how they join with other elements to make substances.